was the greatest preacher I ever heard. And she said, you know, all this the white people have done to me. I came here, I've come to know Christ and come to know the love and forgiveness of God. And I want you children to be the same. You know, with that in my mind, I always see people as one. And because of it, you know, I'm really colorblind. Faith, hope and love is what we are required to share for Jesus Christ. He expects this of us. These are the words of George Rosendale, a man who, despite great hardship and adversity, has never failed to demonstrate his philosophy of forgiveness and love. His spiritual clarity cuts through political jargonism, propaganda and convention. This man defies the image of white missionaries bringing salvation to black people. We thank God for Pastor George and trust through his unique testimony others will realize the salvation of Christ. The theology of Christianity and the theology of, uh, of Aboriginal religion the dream time, it's, it runs parallel along the same lines. Of, you know, their, their beliefs and the way they believed about the God who created everything and uh, where this God lived. And they didn't live in a house, but they lived in the hearts and lives of people. And, uh, well, it was the same theology that the Aboriginals had, that their creator God was part and parcel of their lives. They lived in nature and all around them, and uh, not in a building, as they, as a lot of the Aboriginals understood. And uh, to them, it was a different type of God. And the early settlers have exploited the, the Aboriginal and uh, the troopers or whatever. And so forth, when the, later when the missionaries came, you know, there was this distrust, even to accept new religion. And it took some time before they uh, sort of realized that uh, these missionaries were there to to be a friend to them and uh, help them and uh, share something with them. I believe this is where the first problems were with us, distrust, and uh, I think we have that even to this day, because it is something that has been imposed on our people. Communication was a problem and understanding of uh, culture and, uh, and that sort of thing. I, I believe uh, there are people who found it difficult in uh, really understanding Christianity. And I think this is where uh, there was result in, uh, in, in the building of the church among Aboriginals. I think the uh, church has come to realize uh, and uh, understand Aboriginal people. And uh, they are looking at the dream time and uh, the religion of the Aboriginal people. And, uh, and I think this will bring about a better understanding between the Aboriginals and uh, the Europeans and also uh, the Christian religion. This trust, uh, you know, in Aboriginals goes back long before the church's involvement among Aboriginal people and uh, how the first settlers sort of dealt with the Europeans and, uh, and uh, my, my, my mother went through such periods and her, her mother was shot by police and then uh, later on she was picked up and sent to 
Hope Valley. And her brothers were sent to different other places. And uh, anyway, she grew up at Hope Valley. Come to know the old missionary and uh, looked upon them as uh, her foster parents. You know? And uh, so they became sort of parents to her. And, uh, well, she often spoke about it, and um, I believe she still had that pain and suffering in her, even throughout her life. But one thing about Mum was that, you know, she became a Christian, and uh, she set a very good example to us, the children. And uh, she often spoke about her Christianity to us and how she had found uh, love and forgiveness you know, coming to the mission. And she often said to us, well, my children, I, I wouldn't like you to carry out this bitterness and uh, hatred or whatever towards these people. And uh, I found forgiveness, and uh, I have forgiven them in my own heart. So you do the same. So to this day, uh, you know, we 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 haven't got that uh, hatred towards white people, even though we know our history is not good. Our family history is not good. But uh, all of us have grown up in the Christian faith, and uh, so everybody is the same to us. Everybody is the same to me. Whether he's white or black, he's another human being like myself that uh, needs love and forgiveness of God. Uh, so that's the thing that I share with people. In, and now my... My family is disrupted with white people. You know, I have two white uh, sister-in-laws and even got a white uh, daughter-in-law. So it doesn't mean much to me. I'm a bit of a colorblind. Uh, don't see the difference. You know? and, uh, and I think it's because of what my mother have taught me. To forgive and to love. When I was 18, I had an awful experience. I was bitten by a taipan. And within 15 minutes, I was unconscious. They took me into town, and in, in Cooktown Hospital, the doctor pronounced that I was dead four times. And they flew me to Cairns. I was 11 days unconscious. And when I came around, I found I had a lump of wood in my mouth and tube down my nose and uh, lead on my feet. So I had to lay still on my back for days. They had uh, been there, been giving me blood all that while I was there. And uh, it was about three weeks before I got out of bed. And it took two sisters to carry me around, but my legs were so weak. But after a while, I was right. And when I came home, I thought about this whole incident. And uh, I was very grateful for the prayers, my parents, my friends, my missionary, and somehow I felt that I should uh, give my time and life in the service of the Lord. But it never came straight away. It took some time, 
And then I took up farming in Mandrib. And I thought in this way, I would serve the mission of church. But then I had a call to become a missionary. And it was a challenge. And it took uh, me quite a while to accept. But uh, I don't think I uh, made a wrong decision. Because I, the work that I do today, I really enjoy. And uh, because of my gratefulness to what the Lord has done for me. The Bible also gives us all the information about heaven. And one of the things it tells us that we are to work out our salvation with trembling and fear. It means that we work hard at it to achieve our goal. And as Christians, our goal is to be with Jesus. We are the ones that feed on God's word sumptuously every week. We receive grace upon grace from the Lord's table. We are spiritually rich. Yet, are we really sharing our riches? And because I love doing the things I love doing, so I take my gun around with me when I check fences or do things around the farm. Because I hate type ends. Well, from a Christian point of view, I often say that, you know, the land is not ours. And that's how the Aboriginal even saw it. You know, the land is, belonged to the Creator. He owns the land. We are more or less caretakers of that land. And that's the theology of the Aboriginal people. And uh, we, don't, we don't own it. And of course, with this whole land issue, uh, you know, it's... A lot of it is coming from white people, lawyers and uh, other white leaders trying to make this a big issue. I don't see land as the big issue. It's the brokenness, spiritual brokenness in our people. And uh, I believe this is where the Christian church need to be at work. I think uh, too often we depend on the law to change the ways of people. It's a matter of understanding, understanding the laws. And uh, this is where I feel that the Europeans are not prepared to see what laws the Aboriginal have because they're the same, the same laws. And, uh, and the same Paul says, law, law has saved no man. So in our work as missionaries, I still believe that we can't save or change lives of people through the law, but we need to share the gospel. That is the only hope for any human being, not only for our virtues. And if we can get that message to, to the soul of man, then we'll have peace and we'll have a better relationship and better understanding of each other. This is where my mother was brought from Chiligo. This is where she grew up. This is where she found new life. 
And this is where I was born. During the war, it was from here, we, we moved to Spring Hill. It was there one Sunday morning. We heard this vehicle coming. We were, as kids, we all raced to meet the missionary. But to our surprise, it was a Land Rover with soldiers with their guns. And they just drove up, rounded us up, and said, right, wait here. A few minutes later, there were trucks there to pick all of us up. And they took us with what we had on. They never gave us time even to go and get a change or blanket or whatever. Well, it happened nine o'clock in the morning. And that night, I can still remember my younger brothers and sisters crying. You know, we had nothing to eat all day. And mum got us together. We had our evening devotion. And at the end, I can still remember these words so clearly in my mind. She prayed, we thank you, Lord, for thou art good, and thy mercy endures forever. And just imagine what has been going through my mind. You know, I, I had an empty tummy, and I was cold. And here, Mum, thanking God for everything. And for years, this troubled me a bit. But today, I understand the faith that Mum had, even in times like that. Next morning, we were put on the boat. We still had nothing to eat. We went to Cairns. It was about uh, 14 hours trip. And from the boat, straight into the train, about 9 or 10 o'clock at night. And then on south. Tuesday, about lunchtime, we got to Townsville. And that's when we had our first meal. And when we got there, they took the oldies, they sent them over to Palm Island, and the rest of us continued down to Rockhampton, and then to Bralabar, and then out to Wurubinda. And the weather was terribly cold. Dad went and uh, saw the <coughs> railway master and got some sacks on and threw a sack over us, just to keep us on, uh, warm. Because I only had just a singlet and little shorty pants, that's all. After a few weeks, a lot of our people got sick. They had gastric, and I think it was homesickness and that sort of thing. Sandy blight, just about everything hit us. And a lot of our people died. They lo we lost two or three families. One family lost three children in one day. Two, two were buried in the morning. Another one was buried in the afternoon. It was really a sad time we, we went through. And uh, <clears throat> most of our old Christians, they felt like the children of Israel and they longed to come back home. And uh, you know, it was one good thing, the church listened to us, and uh, we were able to come back and establish hope, hope well. The aches and pains that, uh, that we experience, that is something that we like to share with our young people. And I look around, I can picture myself I raced around the hills here, on the beach down there, and over those sand hills when I was a kid. And I know one incident happened. Uh, we were sliding over there near the point of the hills there, and uh, <clears throat> I hit a hand bed, and I slid on the gravel, and part of my backside, a backside I lost. And my mates took me down, and they've washed me in salt water. 
And you know, Jay, you just can't imagine what salt or salt would have done to the, all the salt that I had in my backside. And, and I tell you, it was painful. And I often bring my kids around here and uh, talk about my history. Because young people today uh, know very little of the suffering, the hardships that uh, we had to go through. And I sometimes feel it's so important that we spend more time with our young ones and telling them about our history so that they will always remember that uh, God was on our side. I often said to people, you know, about history, you know, it's, uh, today we always be thinking about history of, you know, what has happened in the past. And I've often said to folks, well, God only gave me two eyes, and he put it in front of my face, not the back. And uh, so, you know, if we look backwards, it's not going to help us one iota. It's always there. But uh, we need to look forward for a better day tomorrow. And that's what I often have uh, tried to to help uh, in you know, various places that I have been speaking about, that uh, we have to try and learn to understand each other and uh, forgive each other and uh, work for a better tomorrow for all people, for all of us really, not only for our patients, but for all, all of us to live together, to make tomorrow a better day for us and our children. untold suffering our people went through are not recorded because it has been healed by God's grace in his son Jesus Christ the Lord.